Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I love seeing so many people out there. Uh, this morning, we are going to introduce a new song to you guys. It does have to do with Easter, and I'm just going to start by sharing a verse that pertains to the song and to Easter. So it's 1 Corinthians 50, 15, 51 to 56. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with the immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of, the, of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you all stand and join us in worship. Amen and praise the Lord. Amen. He is risen. Amen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen. Yes. I think they picked beautiful songs to just, you know, bring us on the focus of Easter and that last one there. Friday's good because Sunday's coming. And why are you looking for the living among the dead? <laughs> you know, we often make that mistake. But here we know that Jesus is alive. And we know because he lives in us. That's the most wonderful testimony of all. Let's sing them. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that Jesus was given as the greatest gift of all. That you loved the world so much that you gave your only begotten Son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Lord, we thank you that we can be part of that. And we thank you that we could accept Jesus' offer and that he rose again from the dead and that he paid the price and the punishment for all our sin. And we thank you that he lives and is seated now at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that was sent to live amongst us and within us and that we can continue to cry, Abba, Father. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, for your love for us and that we can share that love with one another through the word and song and in worshiping and in spirit and in truth. Bless this service now and bless us, Lord, to walk in unity with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, all right, Jim, God bless you. Everybody got their Bible? If you don't have one, it's under the seat in front of you or behind you. We're going to need it because um, I never got anybody to read this week because we're going to look at the whole chapter, but we're going to look at it in, in pieces. Uh, a lot of people call chap John chapter 20 the chapter of hope. I call it the chapter of restitution. And whenever I, I think of what Christ has done, he simply shows me how much God considers his children part of his family. So as we look today, don't turn to chapter 20 yet because we want to look at Genesis chapter 1 first. One verse, verse 14. So if you want to take your Bible, the very first book, very first page in the book. So we're going to ask God to bless our time together this morning and we're going to look at verse 14 of Genesis chapter 1. You might say, how's this all going together? But I'm hoping it will. If God does it, it'll go together. And you notice this morning, the one who was leading the singing didn't sing the wrong verse. That was good. Last week, the guy leading the singing was singing one verse, and everybody else was singing a different one. So, verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Why did God put the sun, moon, stars in the heaven? Well, we think it's so that we can have light. But God put them there for a reason. 
And in April the 8th, we're going to see one of those tremendous things that God does. And the only reason we're looking at this first is because I want you to realize the God that we worship, the God that we honor, the God that is our Father is great. Amen? Amen. Yes. Not only did His Son rise from the dead, but His Son is also foretold in the stars and the moon and the things around us. April the 8th is going to be a, I can't use, I don't even know the word because Miranda uses, usually reads and Annalise usually reads all the big words, so I don't know it. Oh, I have a special announcement. We have a lawyer now, a part of our little fellowship. Um, Eric passed the bar, the, the fellow playing the guitar over here. So he's a lawyer. So I guess if anybody needs a lawyer, they know where to go, right? <laughs> anyway, so God puts in the heavens, he puts signs and wonders. And he says signs and seasons. The word seasons in Genesis, in the Hebrew, is the word for appointed times or feasts. Okay? So when God says, I want you to, to celebrate the Passover or I want you to celebrate the resurrection, he has feast days. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, we find that he puts the sun and the moon and stars in certain places for a sign for the special feast days. Okay? On April the 8th, there is going to be a total eclipse over the United States. In 2017, there was a total eclipse over the United States. And it started north and went south and went out of the United States in the Carolinas. And in that eclipse, there was seven cities named Salem, which is the old name, the Hebrew name, for Jerusalem. You know what happened in 2017? A 71-year-old president of the United States declared that Jerusalem was what? The capital of Israel in 2017. And that's, isn't that amazing that God put that eclipse right over top of all seven cities that are named Salem in the United States. This time in 2024, starting in Mexico and going straight up across the United States, coming out in Nova Scotia, Canada, it's going to go by eight cities called Nineveh. Three of them, it will pass directly over, and beside one of the cities that are named Nineveh that it passes directly over is a city named Jonah. Isn't that amazing? I know, I, when, I, when I think about things that happen around me, I, I think, wow, God has everything in control. What did Jonah do at Nineveh? Yes, he preached repentance. I believe that God in 2024 is going to preach repentance to North America, starting in the United States and working its way right across North America. Why would that be important? Why would that be important? You know what? God doesn't want anyone to be lost. God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. And God doesn't want any of us to stumble and fall. So when I look at John chapter 20, I call it the, cha the chapter of restoration. Okay? You might call it the chapter of love. That's great. But when I look at it, I call it the chapter of restoration. Look, turn to John chapter 20. And we're not going to look at the whole chapter because we wouldn't have time. I'd be like John last week saying I'm going to have to do it again. But I think this is an Easter message. So at, in John chapter 20, what we find is, is that Mary Magdalene goes to the sepulcher early in the morning, which that one song talked about, remember the women? Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James went to the temple early in the morning while it was still dark. And do you know why they went there? Anybody? Why did they go there? What was the sense? There was a stone rolled across, it was all sealed, and there was guards. Why would they go? What were they hoping to do? They were hoping to praise the Lord. They were hoping to go and give Him honor. They took uh, the same things that Nicodemus and Joseph of Thema, when they took Jesus down from the body, down from the cross, and put Him in the tomb. They wrapped Him in clothes, and they put myrrh and olive, alabaster and all of these things on His body. 
And they went thinking that they were going to give him more honor. They were going to give him more glory. Why did you come to church this morning? Yes, we come this morning to honor God. One of these days we're going to get this young girl to sing for us. We come this morning to honor God, to give Him praise, to give Him glory. He's the God that does all of these wonderful things. In 2032 and 33, there is going to be a blood moon tetrarch. That means two moons in one year, two moons in the next year. And the thing is, they're going to fall on Easter, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And that, two th that year will be the 2000th anniversary of Christ doing what? What did he do on Easter? Rose from the grave. Come on, people. Did I put you to sleep already? He rose from the grave. I believe we're living in the last days. I believe he could come anytime. He could come today while we're here. Wouldn't that be nice? That he knows that we're here to worship and honor and glorify him. So Mary went to the tomb early in the morning. She wanted to glorify and honor the Lord. And when she got there, the stone was, told, was rolled away. So she decided she was going to go tell Peter and John. It, whenever I read, I look at what it's saying, and I try and put my head around it. I'm not very smart, but I try and put whatever I got here around what it's saying. She didn't go and find all the disciples. She went and found Peter and John by themselves. Do you know why? I, th I thought to myself, what did Peter do? What did Peter do on that night that the Lord was betrayed? Anybody? He what? He died him three times. So I think Peter was set off to the side by the other disciples and she went to where she knew John would be with Peter. Why was John with Peter? I believe John was restoring Peter. God wants all of us. We're all going to stumble and fall. Well, maybe not you because you're probably all perfect. But I'm going to stumble and fall. And God knows that. And God wants to make sure that as a family, we are family here. He wants to make sure that there is somebody in that family that will do what? Come alongside. Encourage. Uplift. Someone that will come alongside and say, I know, Peter, you had a bad night. But we've all had bad nights. And I think John was restoring Peter when Mary went and told them that the tomb was empty. And what did Peter and John do? They just took off running. And <laughs> here again, I thought, well, they might probably think, Mary went to the wrong tomb. You know, a woman, she would do the wrong thing, right? No, nobody, nobody threw anything at me. Anyway, they thought she got the wrong tomb. So they go running. They want to make sure that she's not losing it or something. And when they get there, they find the stones rolled back. John gets there first, and he wouldn't go in. He's that little, like me, that little pious boy, you know, that little good boy. He, I'm not going in that tomb and desecrate that temple. I'm going to look in. And he looks down, and he looks in, and he doesn't see the body. But he sees the linen cloth. And the cloth isn't unwrapped. You remember when Lazarus came forth? Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. How did he come forth? Bound up. He was still bound in the grave clothes. But when Jesus came out of the grave clothes, they weren't even disrupted. They weren't even unwrapped. They were just laying there like as if he had just simply slipped out. And here again, I love how God does things in nature. I bet, in son, I bet in class in school, everybody did this. We had that, we got a, a butterfly, and we, the school got a butterfly, the teacher, and we put it in a little box, and we watched it, and it, you know, it lived its life, and then all of a sudden it started doing something. Anybody know what it did? I mean a caterpillar, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean a caterpillar. We got, she brought a caterpillar to school, and we put it in a box, and, a glass box, and we were watching it. And all of a sudden, that caterpillar started doing something. Anybody know what it is? <laughs> hey, yeah, he made a cocoon. And you know when that butter, that little caterpillar came out of that cocoon, 
He came out as what? A butterfly. And he didn't tear apart that cocoon. He just simply slipped out. And there was that cocoon still hanging on the branch. I believe that's a picture of Christ when he left the grave. And you remember what he told the disciples way back in the Gospel of John? We're going through the Gospel of John on Wednesday night. He said, unless you put a seed of corn in the ground, nothing will happen. But if you put that seed in the ground and it dies, it will do what? It will bring forth fruit. But you know what's still in the ground where that seed was? The shell from that seed. But that's how Christ left the grave. He didn't come forth and, and tear everything apart. But he left. He slipped out. And someday he's coming back again. And you know what? This cocoon isn't going to hold us. This shell is not going to hold us because we're going to do what? We're gone! We're going! Amen? Amen. Amen? Come on, people. Are you all sleeping or what? We'll be gone and this cocoon will still be here. And I'll have a new body just like the one that the Lord had when he walked through the wall into the room. Later on, he shows himself to the disciples and he's in the upper, they're in the upper room. And now, Peter and John are with them. Everybody but Thomas is with them. Peter's been restored. Peter's been brought back. Peter's been brought back into the fellowship. You know, I don't know what people are going through. You might be going through the worst thing in your life right now. You might have had all kinds of trouble. There's a song that I have listened to called Living Waters. And it says, uh, there's a man named Jesus, and he stretched out his arms on a cross to take away everyone's sin. Then we're, we're brought into the family of God, and then we're, we're family. You and I are brothers and sisters. If you look at verse 17, what does Jesus say to Mary? Go and tell my brethren, my brothers and my sisters. Go and tell all of them, my family. And when we come this morning, we come to honor and glorify the Lord because, you know what, we're now His family. And if you look at um, verse, verse 17, He says, Tell my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. God is no longer just somebody way up there that we can point at. God is now what? My, well, anybody? My Father. Thank you. Holler it out. Well, one of you. <laughs> Holler it out because everybody else has gone to sleep. Anyway, he's now my Father. He's not some God up there that doesn't care. He cares about everything I do. He cares about what I say, when I get, where I go, whatever I do. And you know what? He cares even when I'm sad and lonely, down, whatever it might be. He says to Mary in verse, um, I should have had these on Mark. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned, under, she turned herself around and looked. The second she heard him say, Mary, she knew who it was. We've been looking at John chapter 10 on Wednesday night. And we've talked about the Good Shepherd. And the Good Shepherd knows what? Everyone by name. He says, I know Jeff. I know Don. I know Don. He knows every one of us by name. And it says when the good shepherd goes in and he wants to take his flock of sheep out of the fold, what does he do? He simply calls them by name. And they do what? They follow him. Psalm 20, I love Psalm 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside the still waters. That's what, that's what the Lord wants to do for every one of us. He wants to keep us. He wants to restore us. He wants to keep us in fellowship. He wants us to be a big, happy family. You're probably saying, how can I be a happy family with Jim in it? Anyway, He wants us to be a big, happy family, getting along. 
restoring one another, uplifting one another, encouraging one another, because that's what Christ did when he came from the, out of the grave. I don't know about you, but I get encouraged when I see the things that are happening around me and I know that my Savior didn't die and stay there. He's where? He's alive. He's in heaven. And someday, he's coming back. Someday he's going to come back and he's going to call every one of us by name. He's going to say, Jim, come on home. You know, in the Old Testament, uh, Enoch walked with God and then all of a sudden, every day they walked and God would say, come on. And then one day Enoch said, well, we're getting a little far from home. He said, no, you're not going home. You're coming with me. Won't that be nice someday? We'll just walk right out of this earth and we'll walk right into heaven. And there we'll be forever. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more troubles, no more trials, any of those things. They're all gone. So I don't know what you're going through today, but it's going to be gone soon. I think the Lord's coming back to restore us to be in heaven. And then it says in uh, verse 5, Stooping down, he looked and saw the linen clothes lying, yet were not lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulcher, and he seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkins that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. And you know what it says next? After they saw this? They knew. They understood. I don't know about you today. I, I've never seen the tomb. I've never seen the linen clothes laid out. But I believe that what God says in this book, He means. So if He says that's exactly the way it was. Those linen clothes were just laid right out. Then I can re rely on the fact that He is telling me the truth. So when I can rely on the fact that he's coming back someday, I can rely on the fact that someday I will be restored to heaven with my Father. I want us to look over at um, verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Now he's in the upper room, and he's talking to all the disciples except Thomas. And he says something very special to them. He said, my father sent me to do what? Anybody? To preach what? The good news. My father sent me to preach the good news so that he could restore his children. But you know what happened to you and I? You, you, you might not think it, but we were all lost in sin. Every one of us. Every one of us was lost in sin. We had to be restored back to a relationship with God. And he sent his son, heaven's best, down to this earth to die on a cross, but to rise again to restore every one of us to him, to the Heavenly Father. You and I are now restored. If you know the Lord is your Savior this morning, you are restored. You are part of God's family. And if you don't know the Lord this morning, then you're still lost. You're still bound for a lost eternity. And that's why Christ came. He came to restore us. He came to bring us back together. So then it says in verse 29, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me and hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. You and I, if you know the Lord as Savior this morning, have a special blessing. Because we didn't see. I didn't look in the tomb. But I take by faith what this book says. And that's what the Gospel of John is all about. Faith. It's all about believing. I believe that Christ died on the cross to take away my sins and rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's get a little excited. Not just at Easter, but I mean every day. So when this wonderful little eclipse goes across April the 8th, and it's going to cross like this, between the one in 2017 and the one in 2024 are going to cross. And they're going to cross 
right over top the Madrid fault line, which runs right along the Mississippi River. I think God is saying, you know what? Wake up! Or I'm going to do something. Either get your act together, or I'm going to do something to show you that I am still in control. I am still the boss. I don't know if anything's going to happen. I'm not a prophet. I don't know if anything's going to happen or not. But I know that he's right now reaching out to North America. Right now, he's trying to receive, he's trying to make people believe in his son. Right now, in North America. And all you have to do is pick up the paper and watch TV and you'll see how many people now are coming out against all of this woke stuff. All of this stuff that they've been pushing on us. You and I have a special blessing. You know, when I die, the, my body might go in the ground, but I'm already gone. I'm gone. I'm not waiting for anything. In the Old Testament, they had to go to Abraham's bosom and wait for Christ to die and rise from the grave so that they, he could take them with him. Not me. When I die, I'm gone. And if you know the Lord this morning, when you die, you're where? Where? All right. Get excited. Get it. You know, it's wonderful. I wish I could do what John does, but I'm working on it. I try over there. We were dancing, weren't we? <laughs> anyway. I'm gone. Then he says in verse 30, And mother, many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in the book. He couldn't write it all. Luke chapter 1 verse 4 starts out by his book by saying he couldn't write it all either, but he wrote just enough so that somebody would believe. And John says in verse 31, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that believing you might have life through his name. And the word life there is eternal. If you know the Lord is your Savior this morning, you have eternal life. It can't be taken away. You can't get rid of it. I wouldn't want to get rid of it. I wouldn't give it up for anything. But this morning, you have eternal life. So that means when you die, you don't die. You just simply go to another place. You just simply go on. You have eternal life. But here's the sad thing. I don't know everybody. I don't know everybody whether they're all saved, whether they've all come to the realization that they were lost in sin, bound for a lost eternity, whether they know that they need to go to heaven. I don't know. You know, I think, oh, because they all came to church today, they're all happy and they're all going to heaven. They're all... Know the Lord is Savior, but I don't know for sure. So I'm going to tell you this morning, unless you have bent the knee and asked Christ to be your Savior, your personal Savior, to take away your sins, don't look at anybody else, look at me, take away your sins, then you're still lost. You're still bound for a lost eternity. But that's why he died. That's why he stretched out his arms, isn't it? You know, isn't that like restoration? I know I can remember my mom. I fell down and I um, cut my knee and I had to have eight stitches. And when I went running home, I had my hand on my knee and everything. And my mom puts her arms around me. Oh, it'll be all right, Jimmy. It'll be good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's what God wants to do this morning. To every one of us. He wants to put his arms around us and tell us, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You don't have to fear anything. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Satan's already beat. He knows it. And he wants to take as many people with him as he can. So he'll give you all kinds of doubts, all kinds of thoughts. Well, I don't want to get saved yet. I'm too young. I had a man tell me that in prison when I used to go into the prisons and do uh, church and Bible study. He said to me, I'm only 19 years old. Why would I want to get saved now? I got a whole life to live. He got out two years later and he got killed in a car accident two days after he was out. So if he didn't accept the Lord in that two days or that two years as he came to Bible study, where, guess where he is today? He's lost. He's bound for lost eternity. But God doesn't want that. God wants everyone. Let's, remember when the Lord was going into Jerusalem and he said, I'm like the mother hen. What does he want to do with his chicks? 
He wants to bring them all in. He wants to protect them all. He wants to watch over them all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with two things. If you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. If you do know the Lord as Savior, and you get into problems, you, you get lost, you get sidetracked, you get doing something that you shouldn't be doing, He wants to restore you. That's what this chapter is all about, I think. It's about love. That's why He wants to restore us, because He loves us so much. But it don't matter what's, what's going on in your life. He wants to restore you. And here's the thing. He wants to sometimes use people like you and me. Now I've had people say, well, you got a lot of rough edges. Well, I do. But I can still be kind sometimes. I can still be, right? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> don't say that with a frown. Say, yeah! Every one of us needs to be careful of what we see somebody else going through. All they might need is a handshake, a kind word. Whatever it is, he wants to restore his children. And you are his children if you know the Lord is your Savior. So John, you want to come and close for us? Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can know that Jesus lives in us. And we have the Spirit who continues to affirm and and witness back and forth between us and the Spirit and the Spirit of God. And we thank you that Jesus knows us and that we can know him and hear his voice and know his leading. And we thank you, Lord, that we can have a relationship of intimacy and continue to grow in that. And we ask, Lord, that you bless us as we go from here, that we would follow closely to you and continue to pursue you and thank you that you are always pursuing us and that you are always looking for us. And if we are wandered off, if we are prodigal, if we're the one sheep out of the 99 or the 100 that walks away, you would abandon all to pursue us and follow us. And yet you're always waiting with arms wide open to receive us back again. Thank you, Lord, now for all of that. And we bless each and every one here to walk in your ways. And we say, Go in the name of Jesus and be the hands and feet of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You are dismissed. Are you